Based on observations, we know the universe is expanding. Using these observations and Einstein's equations, we can delve into the distant past and understand what transpired. As the universe expands, logic dictates that matter was once denser. Indeed, tracing the equations backward reveals a continuous increase in matter density, approaching infinity. This infinite density occurs at a specific point in time, roughly 13.8 billion years ago, and is what we call the Big Bang. In mathematical terms, the Big Bang represents a singularity in various measurable quantities, including the energy density of matter and the curvature of space-time. But was the Big Bang the beginning of the universe? But the Big Bang was not the beginning. So, what preceded the singularity, or whether anything existed before it? What causes the singularity to explode into a Big Bang? Into at the moment is that gravity can have two manifestations. The usual form of gravity that you and I know about is the attractive version. You drop something toward the Earth and it moves downward because the Earth and the object pull on each other. That's the ordinary gravity that we experience every day of our lives. But Einstein's equations actually allow gravity to also be repulsive. It can push outward as opposed to just pulling inward. And this is something that we have never experienced because the gravity created by a rocky object like the Earth is always the attractive variety. The gravity created by the Sun, again, a compact object, is always the attractive variety. But Einstein's math shows that if you don't have a, a rocky object that's isolated in space, but rather energy that is uniformly spread through a region of space, that that kind of entity yields repulsive gravity. If the very early universe, if it was filled with a uniform bath of this energy, we call it the inflaton field, the name doesn't matter, but if it was filled with that energy, it would have been subject to repulsive gravity. What does repulsive gravity do? Pushes everything apart, causes everything to rush outward. So the bang of the Big Bang may have been a spark of repulsive gravity operating with a tiny region of space that pushed everything apart. According to this theory, our universe is created by a quantum fluctuation in a field called the inflaton. This ripple sparked the creation of a bubble that rapidly ballooned in size, hence the term inflation. Eventually, the inflation sputtered out, and all the energy stored within the inflaton field transformed into the matter we see around us. In essence, all the matter in the universe materialized at this specific moment when the inflaton field released its energy. As inflation ended, the ocean of energy was converted into matter. Then the Big Bang. Eternal inflation proposes a universe where countless quantum fluctuations constantly occur, each sparking the birth of a unique universe. However, even this vast, ever-inflating multiverse itself must have had a starting point at a finite time in the past. This begs the question, what existed before that point? Marvel doesn't. It only, in a certain sense, makes things worse. I mean, it's, the argument is that it smooths out the universe and things like this, but it doesn't do that unless you're already special, or even more special in the early stages. So if you follow the argument through, you see that it really doesn't explain this initial specialness. And it can't, because it's all consistent with the second law of thermodynamics, which says things get more and more random. So how could you have got more and more special in, in the early stages? There has to be something else. Hawking proposed a model in which the universe has no space-time. There was just a four-dimensional space, and then one direction of that space turned to time. Sir Roger Penrose provided us with a new framework of thinking. He asked us to imagine what or who's in this universe eventually, if we fast-forward time to infinity. The universe expands and expands, exponential expansion. Now you might ask, who's in this universe eventually? Not us. The black holes will all have evaporated away by Hawking evaporation. They've swallowed galactic clusters. What's left in the universe? Pretty well photons. Photons will move to infinity. The universe will have no mass. If the universe had no mass, there would be no time. These are the two most important formulae of 20th century physics. One of them, of course, is Einstein's E equals mc squared, which tells you, roughly speaking, that energy and mass are equivalent. Okay, you've got c squared, but that's just a constant. 
energy and mass are equivalent. The other formula is Max Planck's E equals H nu. I think people call it F often these days. That's the frequency. E is again the energy. And Planck tells us that energy and frequency are equivalent. Okay, you've got another constant, which is Planck's constant, but that's a constant. So we have these two formulae, both telling you energy is something. And one tells you it's equal to mass, the other tells you it's equal to frequency, apart from constants. So that tells you that mass and frequency are equivalent. Without mass, there is no frequency, which means time does not exist. We will not know whether the universe is big or small. What about the other way? What about the Big Bang? Well, there's yeah. lots of mass there, surely. But the thing is that at the Big Bang, things get so hot, things are moving around so fast, if you like, that the energy or the mass energy mass hyphen energy the concept of mass according to Einstein is almost entirely in the emotion and that the mass becomes more and more irrelevant the closer you get to the Big Bang so again you have a situation where mass is effectively zero Penrose proposes that the Big Bang wasn't the universe's first act instead he envisions an eternally oscillating cosmos undergoing a cyclical process of expansion and contraction. Each cycle features a Big Bang birth and a Big Crunch ending, followed by another Big Bang, birthing a new universe. So what existed before the Big Bang 